In this video, we'll be showing you how to replace your engine's main and thrust bearings. This video will include removal of the old bearings and inspection, installation of the new main bearings, as well as the thrust bearings, and will include measuring of crankshaft end play. Hey guys, Josh with the Update Channel. In this video, we're gonna be showing you how to replace your main bearings in pretty much any engine, but I'm gonna be doing them in a 3406E, but it applies to just about anything. We'll be talking about some tips, tricks, so hope you enjoy the video. So this is the engine I'm working on. Now I've removed the cylinder head and the cylinder packs, and I've cut the counter bores. None of this has to be done to do your main bearings, though. I'm just showing you the state of the engine. These are the counter bore cuts. That's why I have these large plugs to keep metal from getting on the crankshaft and as much out of the engine as possible. Now, all you have to really do is pull your oil pan, which means draining the oil, and then pull your oil pump to get access to the main caps. And the main caps are these large caps with the two large headed bolts on them. And you might notice that the oil is kind of reddish. That's because this engine had oil and coolant mixed in it. So it had some rust problems. And this is your number one main cap. Notice the arrow, these need to face forward. And the front of the engine is the fan side of the engine. So. They also are numbered, so you don't want to mix those up. I'll show you the numbers. Notice the number, number one. There are seven main caps in this engine, number two, and they're all numbered all the way back to seven. Now notice three is missing. We've already removed that for, in, for inspection of the crankshaft. Now notice this hole in the crankshaft. That feeds oil to your rods. Your rods get oil from the mains, so you need to understand that, and you need to try to keep these ports as clean as possible. Now you might notice there's some like dust and stuff in the air. This is a working dump truck and it was not washed before bringing it in, which can't blame people for that. It's not the best time of year here for washing engines off, but the truck itself is fairly dirty. We'll try to keep the engine as clean as possible. And these are the oil port holes I was talking about. Now notice that hole, not hole, but that's a tab. We'll be talking a lot about that, but this is your new main bearings. So you have your lower, I'll zoom in. It says lower. It also has a lot of information actually on this part of the cap, it's, or the bearing itself, I should say. So this is your upper. Uppers and lowers are different, obviously, but you don't want to mix them up. So let's look at this. The top says S. That means a standard size bearing. Then you have your part number, which is a 3173766. It's an upper. It's a cat. Notice the NKMM. That's what we call numeral KOD in the cat system. That's a date stamp. Instead of just putting the numbers, they convert it to this numeral system. Don't know why, but that's what it means. Now your tab is this little tang that hangs off the side. Bearings, journal bearings like these and rod bearings have these, and that's for alignment purposes. And it's very important to notice them and get them installed correctly. These are your thrust bearings. These generally do get replaced when you're doing main bearings. They don't have to be, but I always recommend it because you're gonna be right there and they're easy to replace. Now, this is what we're gonna be using to remove the main bolts. These bolts are inch and 5 16 headed bolts. They are enormous, so not gonna be loosening those by hand. Now, notice all the dirt flying everywhere. Like I said, this truck itself is fairly dirty, so you might be thinking, It's a real nasty habit you got there. Yeah, there's gonna get dirt in places. This video is not shot in a classroom. It's shot in Idaho at Western States cat facility doing a rebuild. This is a standard style job. Try to keep the engine as clean as possible, but like I said, the truck itself can't really control that. So you're gonna remove one bolt and then the other. Now notice once one bolt's out, I pretty much never take one hand off of the main cap. And the reason I do that is because that main cap is quite heavy. It's probably close to 10 pounds of just steel or cast iron. Anyway, it will mess you up if that thing hits you in the face. Now, normally main bolts are soaked in oil. These were fairly dry. I'm not sure why that is. But we have our main cap and the main bearing off. So what we need to do next is get the upper out and then inspect the bearings, the old bearings, to see what's going on with them. So this is a slightly different view of what we were just doing with the caps off now. And you can see your oil hole. We have our tang. We need to get the old upper out. And this can be messy because there's oil generally in the block on these. So when you pull an upper, you can get a lot of oil out. So there's two ways to do it. 
And this is the simplest way, I guess. You'd push it with a flat blade screwdriver, being extremely careful not to scratch the crank journal, and it'll push the bearing portion out slightly. Then you'll use an indexing heel bar works best, and you'll kind of walk it out. The further you get away from it being seated, the easier it is to walk out. And remember, these are the old bearings, so you don't have to be extremely careful about not nicking the old bearings, but you have to be careful not to damage the crankshaft. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it back in, and then we're going to do a trick with a different style of bearing puller. Now, this doesn't work on every main bearing. It doesn't work on every engine. And it only works on ones that have an oil port, because not all crankshaft journals have oil ports in them. But basically, you take this tool. Oh my gosh! You need to rotate the engine around. And then you put that tool in the oil port and you rotate the engine and it'll roll the bearing out. You can also use it for installation of the bearings. It's kind of tedious to do. It is helpful though on engines where the bearing is very stiff. Sometimes it is extremely difficult to get a bearing in or out for various reasons, but some are easy to roll in, some are more difficult. So what I'm doing is I'm just rotating the engine here as you can see. And as it rotates around, what I'm trying to do is get that oil hole in the crankshaft very close to where the journal is, or the bearing, I should say. And then I'm gonna put that tool in and rotate it the rest of the way around. Now obviously you don't wanna rotate into the tab side because the tab side would dig into the block then. You wanna rotate from the non-tabbed side. So we have our tool, it's been installed. I mean installed, you really just slide it into the oil port there. And CAD actually makes two different sizes for this. That is a C13 size and a 3406 size, or I should say 3400 series size. This is 3400 series side. So you can see that bearing is starting to roll out there. I'm not sure why I'm holding 76 rags there, but what we're doing is notice it's starting to pop out. So now all you have to do is rotate the engine 180 degrees, and it'll bring the bearing all the way out. Okay, so the bearing has been pretty much rolled all the way out. You could act, I could move it a little bit more and it would just fall out, but I generally like to get it about 99% of the way if I can and then take it out by hand. So once it's out, you might notice it's got this dirty, rusty looking oil here. I'm gonna be showing you how to clean that off, but... That comes later. What we're gonna be using is this hexane or brake wash, or you could use penetrating oil. A lot of those are solvent-based and a solvent sprayer. And it looks like I'm right under this when I'm recording it, but I am pretty far away. I literally keep my hand extended away from my body and I try to stay several feet away from this. And you want to do this in a well-ventilated area. Hopefully your shop's big enough also, because um, this stuff is kind of nasty. But what it does is it you want to spray mostly in the upper area too to blot any old oil, rust, dirt that's on these journals, because anything you install on there right now is going to be stuck in the new bearings. Unless it's a very small particle, and then it could actually get flushed out. But anything larger is going to be embedded in the bearing. So just doing as thorough a job as I can. I try to get the bolt holes also for the two main bolts. Now these main bolts are being reused. Some main bolts do not get reused, some do. These are okay to be reused. It depends on your engine manufacturer. So this is the old bearing. You can see it's actually, I would say this is a good condition for an old main bearing. You can't see any of the bimetal underneath like the bronze or copper color. It's a few scratches, that's somewhat normal. I would say this is a good looking bearing. Now we're gonna take a look at this bearing here. And this is the one we just pulled off. This is the lower. Notice the numbers and everything are quite different. I'm gonna freeze frame it here so you can see it better. But it is not a cat bearing. It's an FM, which is a federal mogul, which is an aftermarket bearing. Uh, notice it has a different part number. It says LSTD, which would be lower standard size bearing. Always make sure you're doing standard for standard or oversized for oversized, undersized for undersized. If you don't, you could lock your engine up or have very low oil pressure. And if you don't do that, your engine could be destroyed.
This week's destruction of the week is actually from this very engine, and it was taken right before doing the main bearings. You can see this is number one cylinder. Remember what I said about the debris and the engine looking rusty? Look at the accumulation that was around this number one cylinder pack, or I should say the liner. It is stacked like a, an inch high of this metal. Some of it looks like rubber. I don't know what the heck is going on with this thing. It's actually not cavitated. You can see when I pulled the cylinder pack out, a lot of it dumped on the crankshaft. Not the best situation there. Obviously, you can't cover the crank if you're pulling the cylinder packs out because that's where you're pulling the crank. But Our next one's from John Goldsmith. Yeah, wear face shields when working with batteries, folks. This sucker blew up and that not want to be there when that happened. So thanks, John, for sending that. Now, we've got our new bearings here. And we're going to have to seat these, which is... That's, I shouldn't say seat them, but you can see I'm just checking the part numbers again. Basically, you just align the tab. I like to go slightly below on the tab side. And then I'm going to push it in. Now, this is kind of a two-hand job, but when you're holding a camera with one hand, it's difficult. So let me do it real fast. There we go. Look at that. So it's seated. And generally, you'll have the bearing itself will sit slightly above the cap. And that gets me to a question. And that question is, what keeps a journal bearing, meaning a main or rod bearing, in place from spinning around. Is it the bearing tab, magnetism frequencies, super magic, or crush? Submit your answers now, folks. It's crush. The bearing is larger than the journal it's in, so it actually squishes in place. That's why you should not reuse bearings if they've been opened up. So I've already done number three and installed it. You can see that greenish uh, liquid there. That is the oil with a little bit of Lucas in it. Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of pouring Lucas into your engine, but as, as an assembly lubricant, I think it's good because it's very sticky uh, or tacky, I should say. And it's slightly greenish because I had um, so customer had bought a lot of Schaefer's engine oil and we had like half of a jug left. So I'm using that. I'm not going to throw out good oil. It's fine oil. Um, so we're going to be doing number two. You can see I've oiled the face of the bearing. You do not oil the back of the bearing. I had a, a, an apprentice a couple weeks ago say, oh, why aren't you oiling the back? You do not oil the backs of journal bearings. They need to be metal to metal as much as possible to keep that crush properly. If you oil them, you're going to increase the odds of that bearing spinning. Now, obviously, if for some weird manufacturer it says to oil them, then do it. But you're only going to be oiling the surface, which is the face, between the crank and the bearing itself, not between the block and the bearing. Same with the rod bearings. Now, what I'm doing here is we're going to slide this in. If it gets really stiff, you got to be careful because you don't want to damage or nick the bearing. And this one did get a little firm here. That's somewhat common. A lot of times it's a misalignment. Um, it can be off very small amounts like 1 64th of an inch one millimeter and it just won't slide in place if you realign the bearing and try to get it as dead centered as possible usually they'll slide right in because the ends of the journal and the crankshaft have what they call fillets which are tapered areas and it'll actually kind of push the bearing into the block so you want to keep it as aligned as possible use your tabs as reference there we go now, once it's seated with the tab flush with the block, you're pretty much ready. I always check the other side too, and I'll zoom in to show you a little bit better. There you go, locked in place. Now you're ready for the under or the lower bearing, under bearing. And here's a close up. You can see some of the oil is going to squish out when you roll it in. There's nothing you can do about that. Now, what about white assembly grease? I used to use that. Um, it can harden over time, and it's a lot messier. Cat actually says use engine oil, so that's what I use. And here is the lower. You can see I've lubricated it. It doesn't need to be dripping off. Excess is going to get squished out, so it doesn't really benefit you very much to over-lubricate the bearing. Just make sure it has a film all the way around the bearing face. Tabs on the same side on this engine. That is not universal, so make sure you check your engine manufacturer. So we're just going to seat it. Notice the arrow's facing forward, which is to the left, and this is the number two cap. We've got our bolts ready. Like I said, I'm reusing them. I've cleaned them. So you're, I oiled the threads under the head and under the washer. That's what Cat tells you to do. You don't have to soak the entire bolt in oil. That's just messy. Now, just like when I was removing it, I never take my hand off of that cap. 
and I always make sure the bolts are at least threaded several times before letting go of them because those bolts by themselves are quite heavy. They'll knock your teeth out. The cap will knock you out if it hits you. So do not ever take your hands off that cap. So we're just getting the bolts started. Notice I was just running it down with that small electric impact. That thing only puts out 20 foot pounds or something. These are gonna get torqued to a lot more than that. So really we're just seating it. Generally when you seat them, you'll get some oil that comes out because you're squishing the excess oil away from the bearing in the journal. And you can see the dirt falling down. That's from the frame, the way the camera's angled. It's not coming out from the inside of the engine, obviously. So now we are ready to torque it. Now, what is the torque on your mains will vary based on the manufacturer, but this one, it's 190 foot pounds. These are huge bolts. Now, notice I'm using an extension. It would be almost impossible to torque these without an extension because I'm inside a set of frame rails, so I can't move the mechanism, the torque wrench, enough without an extension to get 190 foot pounds. And getting 190 foot pounds with a half inch torque wrench while laying on a creeper on your back is not exactly the easiest thing to do. But you go tab side first, then on tab side for torquing. Then I always torque stripe them. And then what we're gonna do is torque turn them, which means you're gonna, instead of applying a torque to them, you're gonna turn the bolt a certain amount. And that amount is 120 degrees, which on a six sided bolt would be two flats. Because 360 divided by 120 is one third, and one third of six is two. That makes sense. So, and then you go from non tab side to tab side when doing the torque turn. This is the bolt we're going to be using. I notice I've marked three lines on it, so I know where two flats is going to be. What I'll do is I'll put the bolt on the head, and then I'll mark it where I can see it. So, when you're tightening it, when the next line lines up, you're at 120 degrees. Pretty simple. Be using a three quarter inch impact to torque turn these. Try doing it by hand. Good luck with that. Here we go. Yeah, that was fun. On to the next one. So that one's torque turn. All I have to do is torque stripe it, and it's ready to go. So obviously, I have not done number one because it's not torque striped and it's still dirty. You can see how clean number two is. I always soak the bearing and the bolts in brake wash, hexane, mineral spirit, something to clean the old oil and residue off. Clean as possible. And then obviously, I'm going to apply new lubricant to the bolts and the bearings, but I've already shown you that. Next, I got to do number three. Now it's always a good idea to rotate the crankshaft around somewhat to make sure it rotates freely anytime you do a main bearing. I usually do them in sets of two and then work my way back and then I'll do the outer or the three uh, ends. So these are your thrust bearings, like I said. I put some oil on them and then I roll them in just like this. They're on number four, which is the center one. Some main bearings, one of the uppers are your thrust bearings. They're not separate part numbers, but on this engine, it's a separate part for your thrust. There's a forward and rear one, although they're the same part number. Once they're installed, the thrusts control your crankshaft end plate, which is seven to 22 thousandths specification. We're gonna be measuring it here. So once your thrusts are installed, put a dial indicator against the engine to the crankshaft, move it back and forth, which is not very difficult to do. We have 12 thousandths there. So that's pretty much it. We've shown you how to do the main bearings, how to remove them, how to inspect them, how to do your thrust bearings. Fairly simple, although a tedious, dirty process in general. 
has to be done to do engine repairs properly. Hope you guys learned something in this video. Thanks for watching.